Hey guys, this is Sam, and today Apple released iOS 11.0.3 to the public. This is the third consecutive update in three weeks, in addition to public and private beta testing of iOS 11.0.1. So it's been a really busy release schedule for iOS 11 updates, but today's update has a few changes like iOS 11.0.2 and iOS 11.0.1 before that. Jumping into the change log, iOS 11.0.3 includes bug fixes for your iPhone or iPad. This update fixes an issue where audio and haptic feedback would not work on some iPhones 7 and 7 Plus devices, and iOS 11.0.3 addresses an issue where touch input was unresponsive on some iPhone 6S displays because they were not serviced with genuine Apple parts. And below that, there's a note. This is the first time that I've ever seen a note as part of an iOS change log, but it says, non-genuine replacement displays may have compromised visual quality and may fail to work correctly. Apple certified screen repairs are performed by trusted experts who use genuine Apple parts. See support.apple.com for more information. This is pretty much the most low-key shot Apple can send at non-authorized repair places like those kiosks in the mall. They sometimes do a really great job. I don't want to completely just push everyone to the side and say you should always go to Apple, but my mom got her phone replaced one time, or at least the screen, and I looked at the screen after they were done, and I was just like, huh, this doesn't, uh, this doesn't exactly look the same as before. Like, it worked. It was an LCD display, but it was a really cheap LCD. Uh, someone else I know at college got their phone replaced from a kiosk in the mall, and they came back, and they're like, yeah, the 3D Touch doesn't exactly work anymore, and, you know, Touch ID is just completely non-functional, but, like, it's okay. I would always pay the extra 30 or 40 or $50 to get it done on Apple, just because, yes, it will be more expensive, but at the same time, yes, your phone's gonna be fixed, and the screen is gonna be legit. A high-quality LCD versus some cheaper ones that the retailers can mark up and make a huge amount of profit on. Just my two cents on getting your screen replaced. So in addition to fixing this issue where some iPhone 6s non-genuine displays weren't responding to touch, they also fixed an issue where audio and haptic feedback wasn't working on some iPhone 7 and 7 Plus models. And while both of these changes are good and are handy for people who are experiencing them, a lot of people are still complaining about bugs and glitches and other random things with iOS 11, like really bad battery life. So I feel like maybe Apple's saving all of these bigger changes for iOS 11.1 if you want to see what's coming in that, I'll leave a video linked up here in the top right hand corner of the screen. But now, we've seen iOS 11.0.1, we've seen iOS 11.0.2, we've seen iOS 11.0.3. Let me know down below in the comments section if your experience with iOS 11 is getting better or whether battery life and bugs are still the same. I'd recommend updating to this. It's always good to be on the latest firmware. This was a relatively large update on my iPhone 7, about 279 megabytes, but I think it's totally worth it. There's always the chance that Apple could have fixed some other bugs behind the scenes that they didn't specifically outline in the official change log. If you enjoyed watching this video, as always, it helps me out if you drop a like down below. And of course, hit subscribe to be notified when more iOS updates are released. I've been Sam, I hope you're doing great, and I'll talk to you in the next video.